God bless you. This is Pastor Frank Hammonds and Denise Hammonds. God bless you. We're going to have a word of prayer. Father God of heaven, thank you again for this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for this time and this opportunity that we have to come before thy people. We pray that the word will go forth tonight with power and great anointing. We ask, oh God, you will perfect that that is within us. Move in us and through us and for us. Heal those that are sick. We bind out every demon and devil and evil spirit that come to hinder, to bring confusion. We speak the peace of God over the lives of people everywhere. We pray that the glory of God will be revealed and manifested in every one of us. In the name of Jesus, let Satan be bound on every hand. Let the devil be defeated on every hand. He is a defeated foe. I pray for those, God, who are sick, those that are down and out and discouraged and hurting. I pray that you give them hope, for the hope of the world is in Jesus. Now, God, as we delve into the word of the Lord on tonight, be in everything that's said and done, let it be done to thy glory. And we'll be careful to give thy name the praise, the honor, and the glory. Thank God. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you again. It's good to be here again, Tuesday night Bible study. The Lord is good, isn't he? Yes. Amen. And his truth endure to all generations. The Lord is blessing us right now. The Lord is blessing you right now. Yes. Amen. We got to give God the praise in spite of whatever's going on in your life. Whatever is not up to par. Amen. Hang in there. Believe God. Trust the Lord. And you will see him work it out. Amen. Tonight, we're going to come tonight with the lesson walking in the spirit. I'll just name it walking in the spirit. It is so important, especially in the days and the times that we're living in right now, we need to begin to walk in the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, that means that you're walking opposite of the natural. Mm -hmm. It means that you're not looking at what you see naturally, yes. but you're walking in the spirit. Praise the Lord. I want to read, Pastor, I want to read Exodus 17, Starting at the 8th verse, Exodus 17, starting at the 8th verse. You need to have your Bibles. It's okay for you to get your Bibles out and, and read along with us. Amen. Help us as we go along this way. Amen. We're praying for everyone that's going through and the enemy has looked like has hit your house. Yes. And look like the storms of life has come your way. But remember, trouble won't last always. Yes. Uh, the book of Exodus 17 and the 18th verse, would you read that for us if you have that? Amen. 17, 7, 17 book of Exodus, the 17th chapter, starting at the 8th verse. All right. And it says, Then after Amalek mm -hmm. um, and fought with Israel in Rapidium, and Moses said unto Joshua, mm -hmm. Choose us out men. And go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill yes. with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did, as mm -hmm. Moses had said to him, mm -hmm. and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand yes. that Israel prevailed. All right. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Yes. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he mm -hmm. sat thereon, and Moses and Ur stayed up his hand, the mm -hmm. one on the one side yes. and the other on the other side. Yes. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. All right, that's it. That was, All right. That's good. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Sword. He destroyed the enemy. Yes. And from this reading, I kind of uh, remember a while back, I preached from this particular text. And I used as a subject the battle on two fronts. 
yes. the battle on two fronts. What that means is, and remember here it says uh, Joshua uh, was one of the helpers for Moses, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And Moses was helping them fight the battle and Joshua was in the actual battle. Mm -hmm. But Moses was helping Joshua and the people to fight the battle. Yes. And so there was really two battles going on. There was a battle that was down there where the warfare was going on. And then Moses was on a mountain or a hill yes. where he, when they lifted up his hands, if they kept his hands up, the people would win the battle on the ground. Yes. But whenever his hands got heavy and went down, they began to lose the battle. All right. We're talking today about walking in the spirit. And you're talking about spirit, spiritual and, and spiritual things going on. In this verse of scripture, in this text here, we see spiritual weapons in operation. Mm -hmm. Now, the people that were on the battlefield, they were actually fighting with real armor, real weapons. Mm -hmm. Amen. But Moses was the reason why they won or were not winning the battle because his hands were lifted up. Mm -hmm. And his hands represented what being lifted up? Lifted up to God. Lifted up to God. So that represented the power of God yes. and the anointing of God. Also tells us that Moses was fighting this battle spirit. on the mountaintop in the spirit. spirit yes. He was using the realm of the spirit mm -hmm. to fight this battle. And the people that were in the valley fighting, I want you to know that they were in the natural. And so many times we get into a battle. Yes. Many of you are in a battle right now, but you have not won the battle and you're not winning the battle because you are not fighting in the spirit. spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we got to walk in the spirit. So the Bible says Moses' hands were heavy. Yes. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on, and Aaron and her stayed up his hand, mm -hmm. and the one on the one side, and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Mm -hmm. So now, you got the number one, keep fighting the battle. Yes. Stay in the battle. Mm -hmm. Stay in the battle. But whatever you're fighting, and whatever the warfare is against you, keep fighting but you got to fight in the spirit. Right. See, many of us lose the battle because we're only fighting the battle in the natural. Mm -hmm. Amen? So Joshua was the right hand of Moses, and Joshua held up and heard, held up his arms. Yes. What happened? Why did they have to hold up of his arms? Because he, as he lifted up his hands to God, they mm. won the battle. But when he started to get tired and weary and his hands started to go down, then Amalek began to win the battle. Mm -hmm. And so in keeping his hands up and held up before God, yes. that was spiritually so causing them to win the battle. So basically he was fighting the weapon spiritually. So with praise, when we think about when mm -hmm. we praise God, the praises go up. We say that as a saying, the blessings come down. So as you continue to lift up God, then you'll continue to have the victory. Lift him up. And lift him up. Too, it's, uh, it's important for us to know in the scripture that he had help. A lot of times people go help, ask, just do it. But you need help even as spiritual yes. leaders. You need people that are going to help the vision and support the vision. And as you're seeking God and praying to God, you need yes. people that are going to join in with you and lift mm. up God and help lift you up and help encourage um, you to go forward in God and help help Woo. help help tie in with the vision that God has for All you. right, I hear the Lord saying, get in the battle. Yes. Get in the battle. Now, it says, I want to stress this. You already said it, but I want to stress it. Is it all right? Yeah, sorry. And in the 11 verse, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand yes. that Israel prevailed. Yes. And when he let down his hand, the Amalek prevailed. Yes. But the, the, the key to that was in the 12th verse, but Moses' hands were heavy. heavy. Yes. Sometimes you get heavy. Yes. Sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you get worn out. Mm -hmm. 
That's the, that's the purpose of the enemy to bring the trials and the temptation, the tribulation, the persecution, the sickness, whatever he's using against you is to make you heavy yes. and make you become tired. Yes. If you would be honest with yourself right now, mm -hmm. all of you should be able to say to me right now, Pastor, I'm getting heavy. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling heavy. Yes. Have you ever been fighting a battle so long that you just got so heavy? You just, you just could just stop right immediately. You could just drop down because you had no more strength. But God is on our side. And because the Lord is on our side, he's going to cause us to prevail. Yes. He's going to give us the victory. But the way to get the victory in God when you're fighting the battle is to stay in the spirit, to walk in the spirit. See, we're trying to fight this battle with the enemy and in our natural strength. In our natural strength. That's not going to work. For the weapons of our warfare, 2 Corinthians 10, 4, are not carnal, yes. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. When you pull down stronghold of the enemy, it's going to take a toll on you eventually. Amen. And so you're going to have to stay in the spirit, walk in the spirit, move in the spirit, be led by the power and the spirit of God yes. so that you can win the battle. So Moses was on the mountain top, if you will, mm -hmm. and he kept his hands raised up. And as long as his hands was raised up, they were winning the battle. Yes. Now they were winning the battle. He was on the mountain top, but when his arms was lifted up and he kept his arms up, he they would win the battle that they were fighting in the valley. Mm -hmm. They were down in the valley fighting it out. Now, again, I just quoted uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 4. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pull it down a stronghold. It makes a difference the weapons that you use. Mm -hmm. It makes a difference the weapons that you use. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you're fighting an army and you got a bunch of folk with uh, uh, AK-47, I think they call it, whatever it is, AR-15, and they got those machine guns type thing. And you got a little pistol, 38 pack, uh, a 38 special. Pow, pow. Pow, pow. And you throwing a ball. He got a ball in there. And you, while you pushing back, you bang. <laughs> Amen. You, you going, I'll get you. I'll get you. Pow, pow. See? And we are dealing with archaic weapons. But I, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, yeah, but mighty through God, mighty yes, through mighty. God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, let me tell you, and I will keep saying it, this virus is of the devil. This virus is of the devil. That's, this is a spiritual weapon used against the people of God, used against mankind, and the only way we're going to rid of it Everybody hollering vaccine, vaccine. Come up with the vaccine if you can. No problem. Amen. But what we need to have is the vaccine of the name of Jesus Christ. He's the vaccine in the spirit. Fight. We have been fighting spiritual battles with natural weapons. Isn't that something? We've been fighting spiritual battles with natural weapons. Amen. And so this verse of scripture came to me and I began to look at it and I said, wait. The Bible said they prevail. Yes. If you use your spiritual weapons, you will prevail. Yes. Prevail meaning what? You will succeed. You'll you succeed. You'll be successful. Now unto him that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, mm -hmm. according to the power that worketh in us. Yes. Amen. Pastor, give me a little more on this before we go to the next scripture. A scripture that came to mind was Galatians 6 and 9, and it says, mm -hmm. And let us not get weary, weary. in well-doing, for mm -hmm. in due season you shall reap if you think not. Moses was doing a good thing, but he mm -hmm. was starting to become weary. His hands got heavy. Yeah. And sometimes we, as people of God, church folk, mm -hmm. sometimes we get weary. We feel like, look like every time I move forward, look like the devil pulls me back. And so, or or things come from the left, things come on the right. The Bible lets us know that we're 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 in this world. We're not of the world. Mm -hmm. We're in this world. So know that there are going to be times where the enemy comes against you. And who, who does he use? He uses people. And so sometimes we keep doing things that are right and doing. You're like, Lord, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm seeking you. Mm -hmm. Lord, when are things going to change? And so the scripture here comes to let us know: Don't get weary when you believe in weary. God. 
Don't get discouraged. Don't get weary. Don't let your hands in praising God become heavy, mm -hmm. but continue on because the, 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 you know that the prize at the end is success that you're going to win hey. because God already promised that we're going to win. Matter of so fact, let me just weary. let me just interject there because that, that's a good point. You're making weariness. Everybody say weariness. Weariness. Uh huh. Weariness. Now let's not be weary in well doing. Well doing. For in due season due. you shall reap if you faint not. not. Now people, the devil is using weariness all across this land. Absolutely. People are getting tired. People that's been in ministry for years are now starting to get weary. Yes. Preachers that and missionaries and deacons and superintendents and elders and bishops and apostles, prophets, whatever your name is, whatever your handle is, amen, whatever it is, you got to realize many of us are, the devil's got that one weapon that he's defeating a whole lot of us with, yes. and that's weariness. weariness. You've been Weary faithful for 30 years, Yes. faithful down through the years. Mm -hmm. You've been praying and seeking God. And you know how the devil get people like that that's praying and fasting? You yes. get them in the area of weariness. Yes. And they become yes. weary. Now, I, the Lord gave me a message years ago. I preached, don't be weary of the struggle. Of the struggle. You remember that message I preached? Yes, I uh, all right, all right. Praise God. Don't be weary of the struggle. That's right. Amen. Don't be weary of the struggle because that's the, what the enemy is trying to do. There's already a struggle going on, but when you become weary of the struggle, you weary, See, uh, you, like women want to be, most women want to be married, it's not married, and they get weary of the struggle of not being married, weary of the struggle of not having a man like me that can fix uh, a whole lot of things. Oh, oh, that's not me. Yeah, no. All right, amen. So let's not become yeah, weary. Times. I got other talents. Uh, let's not become weary of the struggle. So Moses was a man of God, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He was a prophet of God, wasn't he? Prophet. Okay, and you mean to tell me a man of God and a prophet of God gets, can get weary? Absolutely. That's what's wrong with a lot of us leaders now. We don't think we can get weary. We think we're Superman in the spirit. Amen. And, 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 and that's why the devil hits us at the most uh, inopportune time. Yes. And then we fall down and, and the enemy cuts our head off and destroy us because uh, we thought we was not uh, uh, capable or able to, to come, become weak. Amen. But you got to be careful not to become weary of the struggle. Sometimes you got to, why do people go on vacation? To get, to get re renewed. Renewed and strengthened. Yes. Amen. And, 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 and tired of the same hustle and bustle and get somewhere and lay down refresh. and relax, refresh, renew yourself and come back. Amen. Even though when you come back from vacation more time, you're more tired than when you are when you come back. Amen. Amen. But let's not become weary of the struggle. Yes. Moses' hands were heavy. And the Lord is speaking. I'm, I, I, I'm prophesying. Prophesying don't always mean, yay, for the Lord will say unto thee, yay, 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 yo. Amen. No. A, a prophetic word tonight is God saying there are many people under the heavy hand of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Many of you have been toiling and working and you're, you're heavy. Heavy burdens. I think it was a song that said heavy burdens. Yes. Amen. Heavy. Just heavy. Amen. Sometimes you got to be renewed in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you got to, if you're walking in the spirit, then you don't take these things of yourself, on right. yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you were talking about the weapons of the warfare. One of the mm -hmm. weapons is the helmet of salvation. Yes. What does your helmet do? It protects your head. But what's in your head, your brain, and your mind? Mm -hmm. The enemy many times defeats people in their mind. They begin to speak negative and, and think negative thoughts. And the more yes. the enemy can speak negative thoughts in your head and you begin to buy into it, then you turn around and speak it out of your mouth. That's where the enemy uh, comes in and, and where you lose the battle. And so you got to constantly renew your mind mm -hmm. with the word of God. Put your helmet of salvation on. So that you can protect your mind and protect also as you protect your mind, mm -hmm. begin to speak. Don't speak what you see. Speak what the word says. And that's one of the ways to get renewed. So we have to constantly renew ourselves in prayer, constantly renew ourselves on God's word because the enemy will come in to speak to your mind. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the key things he tries to do is get you to speak and agree with him. Mm -hmm out of your own mouth. Power he can't words. really do anything to mm -hmm. stop you. But he hinders you by speaking 
negative things and, and causing you to see negative things so that you will begin to speak it out of your mouth. Did you not know that your words are more powerful than the enemy? Mm -hmm. When you begin to agree with the enemy and speak negative, that's where the enemy defeats you. And so if you want to win the mm -hmm. battle, you can't agree with the enemy. You got to agree with God's word. Now let's look at the characters of, of this story. That's Joshua, mm -hmm. Moses, Aaron, and Hur. Yes. Amen. Now each one of these men had a particular assignment mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Moses was the one that was supposed to keep his hand up. And then Aaron and Hur were the ones that would stay his hand up. Mm -hmm. Joshua was the one that was down there in the midst of the battle. Right. Some of us are losing the battle and the walk with God because we're not in our right position. All right. That's we're not in our right per place. That's right. Amen. Don't try to do what I do because you're not anointed for the work that I do. That's why I'm doing it because God gave it to me to do it. I can't do the work that you're doing because I'm not anointed to do the work that you're doing. God anointed you to do that work. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, my wife, about... Uh, the gifts of the Spirit. She's a teacher. Amen. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some teachers, evangelists and teachers. Amen. And so she's a teacher. Now, with me, I'm more standing in the office of evangelist pastor. And uh, when the word come on me, that evangelist is knowing most likely get a hold in me. And I go to right on preaching. Well, I tell my wife, come on, you gonna you gonna teach or preach with me. And she'd be like, hold on, hold on. I gotta write my stuff out. I gotta get I gotta get some things together. I gotta think about some stuff. I got she had to study about 38 days uh, <laughs> before she can come on the air. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I do it in three seconds. Five seconds, oh, there's this scripture come, this scripture come. Okay, all right. You proclaim and I explain. All right, That's oh, the praise the Lord. It takes longer to explain. Yes. Get the background. Amen. The so she wants to know everything. I'm like, come on, girl, let's go. Let's get, let's get the word. Come on, let's go. So hold on. I gotta understand the Greek word and the and, and the Hebrew word and what it says and the verb that it was using in that particular sentence. You know, when we get through that particular studying, it's uh we're done. Amen. But the Bible do say study to show thyself approved and working yes. under God need not be ashamed. Rightly. Dividing the word of truth. So every man had his place. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says in the 11th verse here, we're in the 17th chapter of Exodus, and the 11th verse, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, yes. and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Or uh, when you let down your hand, when he let down his hand, they, they, the, the enemy prevailed. Lift up your hands in praise and glory to God. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Everybody said, lift them up. Lift them up. Lift up the name of Jesus. And Joshua discomfited Amalek yes. and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of the Amalek from under heaven. Amen. God will destroy your enemies so bad that you will not remember them no more. Mm -hmm. And you can go and make a memorial unto God for how he gave you the victory and deliverance over the enemy's power. Yes. Amen. And you, you have something else to add to that, and teacher? Uh, one good thing mm -hmm. I, I see that it says later on in the 15th verse, it says, mm -hmm. Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. Oh. Um, and you got to know that anytime where the enemy comes against you, yes. God, go, Jehovah goes before you. Yahweh goes before you. And so you don't have to worry about That's the thing I like about it. Whenever you're attacked, if you put your faith in God and you're walking in the spirit, you already know who's going to win the battle. All right. You are in Christ because he's already given you the victory. He didn't say you were going to get the victory. You already have the victory. And so we just have to walk it out. We just have to go forth yeah. and do the steps. And the thing I like about it when you were talking about the offices, 
Mm -hmm. uh, God said, Moses, I've directed and I've spoken to face to face. Yeah. And so the rest of them had never seen God, but Moses went up to the mountain um, and had the mountain experience and he saw God and talked with God face to face. And so when God directed him to do something, just like when he uh, went to Egypt, God said, I'm going to use you to bring, God, God told Moses, you go get to bring him out of Egypt. Go on. He, uh, and he said, Lord, who am I? He said, I'm going to go before you, but I'm, you, I've chosen you. That's your assignment. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different assignment and a purpose. And so it's so important for us to walk in our own purpose and assignment. And as I believe as you're walking in the spirit, God will cause you to fulfill your assignment. I like that and what it you might said. Be different, but it's still your, your assignment and mm -hmm. you have a purpose in your assignment that's different than my assignment. I like that. I like that. I like especially what you said, that his name was called Jehovah Nisi. And Jehovah Nisi means Jehovah our banner. our banner. And when they won this fight and they won the battle, they had the banner of victory. Yes. And, and, and he has a lot of names. The Lord has a lot of names. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Je Shiloh, my peace. Jehovah to yes. sick anew, the Lord is sanctified. Yes. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Uh, uh, and, and just continue on and on. The right. name of the Lord. But it's amazing how the name here was Jehovah Nisi. Yes. The Lord, our banner. Bad, if you will fight the battle and stay in the spirit and walk yes. in the spirit, God will give you the banner of victory. Mm -hmm. The banner of victory. The devil cannot defeat you if you keep your hands in God's hand. Hold your hand up high. Reach toward the sky. Amen. Let your hand be lifted up to heaven. And the Lord will give you deliverance. Amen. So that verse of scripture was put in my spirit on today. And let me let me finish reading the 12th verse. Yes. And Moses' hands were heavy. And he took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on. And Aaron and her stayed up his hand. And the one on the one side and the other on the other side. I told you, everybody got a position. Everybody See, when, when I start trying to function in your anointing, I'm not going to do well for long because that's not my anointing. That's your anointing. You try to function in my anointing, amen, you're not going to do well after a little while because it's not your anointing. And see, I've heard of preachers even that are, were just preachers. They were anointed to preach. And then you had another preacher that was anointed to teach. Yes. But the preacher that could preach and had the anointing of preaching would try to teach and get all the stuff messed up and everything all tangled up because he wasn't really a teacher. Mm -hmm. See, you know, a teacher studies and, and all of us should right. study, but teacher. the teacher uh, studied and is able to explain and make expository explanations. And all of that, amen. And I may just go sing, yeah, oh glory, you know, and then just preach on, you know. But uh, amen, God needs to be writing notes and, and paragraphs and sentences. And she wrote a book, she's the she's the right one to write the book. She's the right because if I had wrote a book, it would have been about 30 pages or less, amen. But she wrote a book, I don't know how many pages it was. But it was a lot of information. And I was reading through that. Huh? Yeah. She said, you like the book? I said, yes, I like it. I liked it. I, you, you, you read it? I, I'm not finished with it yet. Now, see, that, that's just not my calling. Amen. So I'm not a, a, a writer, a publisher. I, you probably don't be looking for a book from me. Because it probably won't happen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I would more or less write probably booklets. You know, study guides or something of that nature. Amen. So everybody has that part to do. We got to walk in the spirit. Don't get out of the spirit and get on somebody else's territory and into somebody else's anointing. Let's go to Ephesians 6, if you will. Ephesians 6. Amen. Y'all getting the word tonight? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Ephesians 6. It's a familiar scripture. And, uh, says starting at the 11 verse Ephesians 6 starting at the 11 verse put on the whole armor of God 
that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let's stop right there. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. In, when you're walking in the spirit, you got to move in the spirit. You got to talk in the spirit. You got to amen, pray in the spirit. You got to be in the spirit. Put on the whole armor of God. The armor that the Bible is talking about here in Ephesians 6 that Paul is uh, enumerating the parts of the armor, they're all already spiritual armor. Yes. This is not natural armor. Right. Amen. But he right. uses right. He uses this as a and as an example to show us and, and talk about natural armor so we can think of the natural armor, the helmet of salvation. Yes. Let, let's go through that. Uh, we, we passed, uh, started at the um, 13th verse. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. And it says, wherefore, take unto you yeah. the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Mm -hmm. And having done all to stand... Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, yes, yes. and having on the breastplate of righteousness, mm -hmm. and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench mm -hmm. all of the fiery darts of the wicked. Go ahead. And take the helmet of salvation yes. and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. All right. So stand therefore, 14 verse, stand therefore having your loins gird about with truth. Your loins is the, you know, right under your belly, and that's where you would put your belt on or something like a belt that you would use to hold up. Now, that's a very important weapon there. Yes, sir. Because, you know, don't be caught with your pants now. Kind of like you, you know, take the place of uh, suspenders and, yes, uh, and, and yeah. the belt that the men right. put on. Right. Keep your pants so if you don't have the suspenders <laughs> or belt, your pants going to fall. All right. And you don't want your pants falling in front of the devil. All right. You leave yourself uh, exposed, exposed. <laughs> mm -hmm. to its right. exposure, saints. All right. Amen. And so have your loins girded up with what? Truth. Truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. Right. The but the breast breastplate. Let me get it right. Protect your heart. Uh, your heart, all that heart, area there. Lungs and kidney, all. Yeah. That. So your vital, vital your most vital organs, organs are in your chest area, which yes. would be your heart. Yes. And so you have the breastplate of righteousness yes. to protect your heart, mm -hmm. keep your heart in tune. You whisper a heart. prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in the evening. And keep your heart in. Two. Mm -hmm. Amen. Your heart got to be right. Yes. Amen. Some of y'all got heart problems right mm -hmm. now. Amen. We'll pray for that too. But some of us, most of us have spiritual heart problems. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the breastplate of righteousness, what else? Yes, have a breastplate of righteousness. Yes. And, and take, have your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh -huh. Above all. Above all. Take the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, when I think of the darts of the, uh, of the wicked, he's saying uh, take the shield of faith above all, because the darts of the wicked is uh, is going, I believe, mostly to your head. It goes to your heart area where he can try to stop your heart and your faith in God. Negativity. Yeah, and all that. You can't do this. Yeah. You can't do that. This won't happen. It never. Be, we don't know anybody that's ever done it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know what? When your feet don't feel good, when your feet is hurting, it can mess up your whole body. Mm -hmm. Matter true. of fact, when your feet is messed up, your your statue, your your ability to stand straight, walk straight, uh, you lose your balance, you, you lose your ability to be strong mm -hmm. uh, in your back because that's very important. Your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And also, I heard this. I didn't realize this until later in life. 
but uh, your feet kind of controls it when you get massages. They, mm -hmm. they hit certain pressure points in your feet mm -hmm. because it's connected to different organs in your body. And didn't realize that, but the, your feet are so super important. And so we come in peace in the name of the Lord, not in, not in terror or not, in, you know, not in uh, negativity and different things, but your feet controls kind of sort of the rest of your body. And that's why, like you said, if you're in pain, mm -hmm. it's a, it can affect different organs even in your body. Well, you ever had your feet, feet so massage? Absolutely. You had your feet massage? Yes. Amen. <laughs> that's a good thing. I, 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 I haven't had my feet massage. I'll be... <laughs> I'm just very ticklish in that area. I don't think I can make it through. But it's very important, like you say. And you, we need, these are the days that we need to stand sure-footed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Left foot, right foot. Amen. I, I, I still haven't gotten the, amen, the ability. I, I never was a dancer. Uh, never could dance uh, in, the, in the natural or in the spirit well. Amen. Because uh, I just didn't have a beat. I was born without a beat. The man without a beat. Michael Jackson said beat it, but I, I'll tell you. I, I just never had that ability in my feet, amen. But that's very important. Mm -hmm. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It's good to be prepared. Preparation. Yes. Amen. Sometimes we jump into things and never have been prepared to do what we jump into. Mm -hmm. You got to prepare yourself. Preparation may mean, what well, it does mean, time. When you cook food, that was a certain person that I know that cooked some greens. And uh, they said that they didn't cook the greens uh, as long as they should. Amen. And I never what knew that. I, I, never knew, <laughs> I, <don't want> me. <laughs> I never knew that greens took that long to get cooked. Yes. But when I ate those greens that the person gave me after they had cooked it for quite some time, and had the ham hocks and things in there, I said, praise God, amen. I was blessed, amen, but that was because of preparation, mm -hmm. amen. When I tell my someday you come back on, I come back on the air, we'll talk about the tuna that I cooked and how the Lord blessed that and no one ate it, <laughs> not even myself. All right. right, because I didn't know the preparation of making tuna. I like tuna. But uh, I, I, I messed up. Amen. So have your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. In other words, after you put on everything else in the armor, don't leave home without it. Yeah. Don't leave home without what? Faith. 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 Yes. The power of God. You got to, and the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, the sword is an offensive weapon. Yes. All of these other armor that was talked about here were armor that, that was uh, defensive. Mm -hmm. Defensive. Yes. But the sword of the spirit is offensive. Mm -hmm. So when the devil comes at you, you got to be offended All right. and use your offensive weapon. Mm -hmm. And there you go. For the word of God says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yes. Faith is the substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things not seen. Yes. All right, man. You got to That's uh, using the, the sword as an offensive weapon. Some of y'all. Yeah. Some of y'all, all y'all doing when the devil come at you. Ah, oh, stop it, devil. Oh, oh, you heard me. You said the wrong thing. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Amen. What's that program where the man didn't have a brain, the one didn't have a heart, and uh, the, Wizard the Wizard of Oz? I like that program. Amen. The Wizard of Oz. Still watch that today. Amen. The Wizard of Oz. And the Tin Man didn't have no uh, what is that? He didn't have no he didn't have a heart. heart. Amen. He was just empty. Scarecrow didn't have a brain. Scare Scarecrow didn't have a brain, and the Lion didn't have no courage. Amen. We need all of those. We need everything. To walk in the spirit. I'm mean, determined to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. Through hard trials, tribulation, persecution, I'm determined to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. Get a heart. Mm -hmm. Stand up on the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Amen. But the, all of this is talking about walking in the spirit. You can put all this under the, the one topic, walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, 
let me go to another verse. This just came to mind. Holy Ghost brought it to mind. Let's go to Matthews. I believe it's the 14th chapter. Amen. Walking in the Spirit. So we, we if we're going to walk in the Spirit, we got to put on the whole armor of God, first of yeah. all. Yeah. Right? we got to put on the whole armor of God. And we might be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. <laughs> Matthews, let's go to Matthews 4 first. Uh, Matthews 4 first, and then we'll go to Matthews, I believe it's 14. Amen. Uh, it says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Man shall not live by what? Bread alone. So what does that mean? Can you help me out? By food, by natural food. Mm -hmm. he, Jesus was on a 40-day fast, and so the, the devil was trying to tempt him with eating. Of course, when you're fasting, especially if you're, you're doing an extended fast, one of the things that's going to that's happen is that you are going to get hungry. Yeah. And so he was uh, uh, tempting Jesus with the flesh, saying, if I give you bread, you know, then will you be tempted to follow me? No, don't don't allow your hunger for anything, right? Um, including bread, to cause you to walk away from God, grace and mercy, but um, continue to, to eat the word of God because the, the Bible is the word of God. So it's like mm -hmm. bread. bread. Jesus is the bread of life. And so as we as we continue to read the word of God, you're eating the bread of life. Yes. And you're restoring yourself. When you think about natural bread, you eat natural bread so that you can be refreshed naturally so, so that if you continue not to eat for a long time, you get weary and you get weak. Mm -hmm. But in the spirit realm, if you continue to feed on the word of God, it'll build your spirit, it'll build your soul. So man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, get into the word of God, that is spiritual. Isn't yes. it? The word is spiritual. Amen. The, the word spiritual. is just simply spiritual. It's life. My, my words are spirit. Amen. Yeah. And they are life. Let's go to walking in the spirit. We're talking about walking in the spirit. There's some things you have to have. Matthews 14 and 24. And we'll reach down to the 27th verse. And where we read down to the 29th verse. I'll read quickly. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Matthew 14, starting at the 24th verse. Mm -hmm. In the midst of the sea, and tossed with waves, for the wind was what? Contrary. Contrary. There are going to be some things in your life that's going to be contrary. All right. Contrary meaning that's going to bring trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to bring you anxiousness if you're not careful. Yes. Amen. The winds were contrary. They were tossed in the midst of the sea. With the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Now, if I was going to use this verse of scripture, and, and I can preach on this alone, the 26th verse. And I would just simply say, get in the spirit. Get in the spirit. Some of you, you you're tossed to and fro. Mm -hmm. The winds of life is blowing on you and, and tossing you to and fro. Yes. Because you're not in the spirit. You are looking at what you see. See, everybody is in uproar because of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Everybody is in uproar now because of the rallies and the, the, the protesting, riots, and, riots and, and all that. That's because you're looking at that thing alone. Mm -hmm. Look at it, uh, look at it in the eye of the spirit. Yes. Now tell me what do you see? Mm -hmm. Do you see what I see? Yes. That's another message I preached years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I see? What I see. Right. Amen. What did the disciples see, sister? What did they see? They saw that the wind was contrary. All right. The waves were high. It looked like the, uh, the, the boat was tipped over, and, and um, then they saw somebody walking on the water. Mm -hmm. They so, thought it was a spirit. So in, in, in essence, they saw the storm. Mm -hmm. But who was walking on the sea? Jesus. Jesus. But who did they see? They saw the storm. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. They saw the waves. They saw all the danger around the lightning and the thundering. Mm -hmm. But but when you're in the spirit, you you would see Jesus. All right. See, you can look at your worst situation right now that you're in right now. Yes. If you stop looking at the situation itself, you would see Jesus. All right. Stop looking at the coronavirus and, and the COVID-19. Stop looking at it per se and see Jesus. See your deliverance. See the breakthrough. Yes. See the door open and the blessing coming. But they were they were looking at the wind tossing the and the waves that was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, mm -hmm. Jesus walked on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. They were troubled. They were scared. And they say, it is a spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, you're right, it is a spirit, but that's not the way they meant it. Right. They meant it is a spirit. It is a devil or something. Something, something, something coming It's going to kill us. And then it was Jesus himself. Was Jesus. Oh, Some of us say Jesus. we know the Lord, but we don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. We don't recognize him. Amen. God is in the midst of everything that's going on right now in our world. Amen. I said God is in the midst of everything that's going on in our world. Yes, he He's is. right there. We don't have to call and say, Jesus, come down here. Help us. Come on. Don't you see? Don't you know? Come down, Jesus. He's already here. That's right. He had to go nowhere. All right, 26th verse. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. fear. They cried. Fear will make you act all kinds of ways. Oh, yes, it will. Second Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us the, the spirit. spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh, fear will make you lose everything you got. It will make you lose your consciousness, your mind, your, mind, mm -hmm. your way of thinking yes. in an orderly fashion. It brings the, torment. Yeah, fear brings torment. Yes, it does. And that's exactly what they were experiencing right here on the sea. Mm -hmm. Torment. Yes. They were being torn. That Now, think about it. The Savior was walking toward them, and they saw torment. Mm -hmm. They didn't see Jesus. They saw torment. Mm -hmm. Good point. Great job. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh -huh. All right, then. <laughs> All right. It's just going good. It's, time, it's important for us to see Jesus um, yeah. in our situation and not look at the mm -hmm. negativity not look at what's going on all around, even with the, the marches and all this. To me, it's just God exposing that spirit of racism that's been in the earth for years. Mm -hmm. It's been there, you know. Um, and, and the one thing that I see, you know, we're just looking at, okay, the, uh, the racism happened, but look at all the people of every color, race, age group coming together across the world. Mm -hmm. and, and when you think about it, if, if we're in Christ, we're supposed to love one another. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't matter what color the person is, black, white, Indian, Greek, mm -hmm. Jew. We're supposed to love one another. Now, in fact, Jesus said, this is how you're going to know that this person is my disciple. By the love, not by the gifts and the power, but by the love that you have one to another. And so sometimes God allows things happen to mm -hmm. get our attention to say, hey, we're supposed to be walking in love. We say we're Christians, but yet we're hating one another and fighting one another. And I don't like him because he did. That's not the love of Christ. And let me say, you, you brought a good point up. Uh, it says in the 27 verse, but straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It, it is I. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Now, uh, some of us are hating on one another, blacks and whites, and dislike one another because we're afraid of each other, really, because we really don't know each other. We really haven't taken time to know one another. So we, we get into fear. And so one person sees another person is not the color they are, and they get up in arms. Mm -hmm. And they're ready to, who that? Who that? I'll shoot, I'll shoot. Ooh, ooh. You know, you see, you miss your blessing. Right. Amen. So don't, don't be afraid because fear will take all common sense away from you. Mm -hmm. All the ability to really analyze and really to look at things as they are. It, it goes down the drain. Exactly. Amen. It really people really don't really hate each other all, so much as much as they have fear of one another and not knowing the other person. And then when they get, you know, have you ever met somebody and you you just first saw them fall? You you were scared, you didn't know, you, you didn't feel too good about, and then you get somehow or another you came together and met and you said, that person wasn't bad at all. Not at all. 
Oh, so wow. This preconceived notion. Oh, yeah. this person is a bad person, or this person is evil, or this person. Are you go by what you heard. What you heard. Mm -hmm. Preconceived notions. What you saw. Thoughts mm -hmm. Concerning the other person. So it's time for us to begin to walk in love. Right. And Peter said, 28 verse, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come I'll unto the water. What? He said, and he supposed to have known it was Jesus. So we don't know that we really love one another, mm -hmm. but we really don't know it because fear has clouded our eyes and the ability to, to know. Mm -hmm. But it was Jesus that was walking. Yes. And said, be a good cheer, it is I. Amen. Father, we rebuke fear in Jesus' yes. name. Spirit of fear. We rebuke the spirit of fear. Yes. We, we rebuke the spirit of calamity yes. and destruction. Hatred. We rebuke the spirit of hatred yes. and dislike and, and, and misunderstanding yes. and unforgiveness. Fusion. Father, we break the powers of darkness right now yes. in the name, in the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. By the name of Jesus, we command the Satan to move and not to return in our lives. Thank you, Lord. We give your name praise. Thank you, Lord. We give your name glory yes. and honor. Well, praise the Lord. Pastor Deneen, I'm so glad you was with me to teach this word tonight. I was in fear that you would not be here. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I grabbed hold of faith. Amen. Right. I grabbed hold of faith. Amen. And we want you to know that God is going to bless you. Walk in the Spirit. When you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you walk in the spirit, the glory of God will come upon you. The hand of the Lord will touch you and deliver you. I want, I feel led tonight to tell you to call somebody else in the room that's not in the room. You're in your house, but somebody is in your house as well, and they're not in the room with you. Go and call them and let them sit down and stand up or whatever for this prayer. The prayer of deliverance. Call them right now. Call them right now. That son, that daughter, that husband, that wife. Amen. Bring the dog in if you want. Amen. But we want to pray the prayer of deliverance. Amen. That God may heal. I'll wait a few minutes to give you a chance to bring them in. God is so good. He is so good. The hand of God is here to deliver. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yes. Get ready. Jesus is on his way back. These are the signs of the end times. These are the signs of the last days. This knowing ye also if you're living in the last days and perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, high-minded, boasters. Amen. These are the days we're living in. Amen. These are the days. Amen. I want y'all to come back on Sunday. The Lord say the same Sunday. Amen. When the Lord give us the message. Amen. Can you hear me now? The Lord saying, can you hear me? I'm speaking to you. Now, Father God of heaven, I bless everyone that's under the sound of my voice. I pray for the persons and persons that are looking at us now. May the hand of the power of God touch every one of them. Let every sickness and disease be eradicated from their bodies. Lord, let the yoke of the enemy be destroyed because of the anointing. Anointing, fall on me. Let the power of God's anointing fall upon each person tonight. From the crown of their heads to the very soles of their feet, be healed in Jesus' name. Be delivered by the power of the living God. Glory! Let the hand of God touch you now. Sickness and disease must not be I command sickness and disease to go from your body. I rebuke cancer, arthritis, all manner of sickness and disease. But he's able to heal us of all manner of disease. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Man, I say to you, be recovered. Woman, I say to you, be recovered. You shall recover. You shall recover from this condition. You shall recover from this sickness and this disease. You shall recover in Jesus' name. Thank the Lord. Now, Lord, thank you for this time and this time of prayer and teaching. Be with us. 
and bring us back at the appointed time. We be careful to give thy name the praise, the honor, and the glory. And all of God's people say, thank God. Amen. This is Pastor Frank Hammonds of Miracles Through Happen Ministry. We're located at 621 South Mayhill Road in Denton, Texas. Amen. Come over and see us. The Lord is working. The power of God, the anointing, the glory of God is there. Until next time, Sunday. Amen. We'll see you Sunday. The Lord say the same. Preaching the word of God. God bless.